Hey, how you doing? Just a quick heads up. This is chapter nine of the audiobook version of my book, Conversational Relationship Marketing. So if you haven't listened to any of the uh, other chapters, I suggest you go back and listen in order if this is your first time to the Client Catching Podcast. And if you're not into the book, then no worries. You can always go back and listen to some of the amazing interviews that I've done with some great guests on the show. So go back and check some of those out. Golden rule number nine. Scale happens when you fish farm. This is the real power of LinkedIn that most ignore. Now, what if I told you that there's a way to leverage LinkedIn that not everybody immediately thinks about? And it's a way that can generate even more results than just fishing for clients one at a time. I find that probably the most overlooked source of leads, clients and growth for any B2B or service business is the much deeper ocean of non-competing businesses that serve the same ideal client as you do. So why not use LinkedIn to build meaningful relationships with these businesses to generate leads, referrals and even additional revenue streams for both of you? Now, what I'm referring to here is strategic alliances. And if you do nothing else from the ideas in this book, do this. Do what I'm about to talk about in this golden rule. Because when planned and executed well, a strategy devised to make your business irresistible to potential strategic alliance partners and referral sources, it has the potential to produce the greatest return of investment on any marketing strategy a hundred times over. Now, Alliances is one of the three core growth accelerators in my growth accelerator ecosystem methodology for a reason. Now, why is that? Well, it's because massive revenue growth is probably hiding in plain sight. You see, for anyone that's been in business for a while, I find that within your existing network, there is potentially six or seven figures of untapped growth opportunities. You just need a strategy that allows you to use other people's network, audience and resources to open doors for you, generate opportunities and add additional revenue streams to your business. Just think what would happen to your growth if you could regularly get in front of 100, 1,000, 10,000 or 100,000 ideal potential clients. And you can do this without spending a penny on advertising. Well, that is exactly what you can do with alliances. And not only that, they shortcut developing trust because a recommendation or an endorsement from a respected source comes with a trust factor already included and further builds your own authority. Which is why one of the fastest ways to build momentum and grow your business is with strategic alliances. Now, after over 17 years in marketing, I can confidently say that partnerships and leveraging your relationships to mutual benefit is better than any marketing tactic out there for catching new clients that might be currently hot right now and maybe people are trying to get you to buy or teach you. Seriously, it's better than Facebook ads, better than funnels, better than posting hundreds of times a day on social media. And it's better because human beings have been growing empires, not just businesses, based on these strategies and principles for thousands of years. And the best part, it costs nothing but a little bit of time and willingness to approach it with a true win-win mindset. So if using LinkedIn to find and build strategic alliances has so many amazing benefits, why isn't this the first thing I covered in this book? Well, there's a few reasons. See, when I guide through people through my Growth Accelerator ecosystem methodology, strategic alliances tends to be the part where I find the most resistant when it comes to actually implementing. Which basically means that experience has taught me that even though this is the most effective marketing strategy around, because it doesn't rely on the latest hot tactic, it doesn't seem as sexy or exciting. And so it's often ignored. And most of us conceptually understand strategic alliances. And if you struck up a strategic partnership, deal or referral swapping relationship in the past, it's easy to gloss this over and think, wow, you know, I know this already. That's fine. I I get it, right? See, I needed also to build your trust in me, my methods and my expertise. And as you're still listening, I'm going to uh, assume that I've actually achieved this. Who knows? So that when I tell you that I have a different way to do strategic alliances, you'll pay more attention and actually implement it. And finally, again, with a lot of this, there is no easy button. 
It takes dedication, discipline, organization, and work to achieve results. So what are strategic alliances? Now I know I'm in danger of laboring a point here, but what I'm really trying to make 100% crystal clear in this golden rule is that one of the most reliable ways to grow your business, it is to get other people to help grow it for you. Now you might be thinking, why would other people want to help you grow your business? Well, it's quite simple really, by helping them grow theirs too. See, in simple terms, this means creating relationships with a specific group of people and businesses that sell to the same buyers that you do, but offer a different solution. You see, you don't compete with each other, you complement each other. And, that, and the reason strategic alliance partnerships are so effective can be summed up with my own little twist on a, a pretty well-versed quote. You know, Give a man a fish, he'll eat for a day. Teach a man a fish, he'll eat for a lifetime. Leverage a crew and you'll feed the entire village for generations. So the reasons that strategic alliances are so powerful. What I'd like you to really encourage you to do from now on is to really think about the concept of access as an asset. In the case of strategic alliances, you're getting access to other people's network, audiences, client base, knowledge, connections, and all those kind of things, which turn in, which in turn becomes an asset for your business. Another way to think about alliances is a distribution channel, one that will help you expand your reach and grow your revenue. And every time you gain access to something you didn't have before, you're effectively creating a new distribution channel. And that could be for your service directly, your message, or your marketing. But that's not it. That, that's not all. Access is also an accelerant. Access for you to your partner's audience and network is an accelerant for your business. It speeds up how you get in front of your ideal clients. It cuts the time you need to spend building trust with prospects as your recommendations and endorsements come with that already implied and built in. I'm hoping you can start to see that when you get this, that you can attract clients to your business and potentially earn revenue in a way that you never had before. And the best thing about this, it works both ways. See, the real benefit of alliances is that even though access is an asset for you, it's also an asset and an accelerant for others that you can help. Both you and your partners, your clients, their clients, their friends, their families. And once you increase your access, you can then use this to provide others access to these things that they didn't have before, which accelerates your reach and exposure to their network and further increases your access. And that cycle continues. See, the network effect here is exponential and offers huge benefits to everybody in it. You're ultimately looking to build these relationships to the point where they'll introduce you and your offer to their network audience and or their client base. And you're able to offer your network, etc., additional value over and above the expertise, your expertise and area of focus. Now, I'm going to warn you, there's a fishing metaphor alert coming. Because what I call this is, I call it fish farming. See, with this approach, you will transform yourself from chasing after new clients like you're trying to catch fish with your bare hands to building your own private fish farm. You see, most people in business, they have to jump into that river whenever they need clients and just hope they can grab a fish as they swim past, right? But consider this in contrast to having your own fish farm. You turn up every day knowing there are fish in the water. They're simple to catch as they're contained. Better still, the number of fish consistently grow in numbers as they spawn and breed. And really, this is all just a metaphor for attracting opportunity and growth. If you understand and truly get this at a, fundament, at a fundamental level, if you take it in and think about your marketing as it relates to prospecting, referrals, outreach, and all the relationships that you're building in the process, you'll have a business that is unstoppable. Now, I'm not revealing anything groundbreaking or particularly new here, but so few actually do this despite partnerships simply being one of the most powerful marketing strategies on the planet. Robert Kiyosaki of Rich Dad Poor Dad fame, he says, the richest people in the world look for and build networks, everybody else looks for work. So why not do what they do? So again, sticking with my fishing metaphor and 
you know, you really will either love it or hate it by now. Essentially, what you're looking to do here is get invited to fish in other people's ponds full of hungry fish. Because the more lines you have in these ponds you're invited into, the better your odds are of catching a lot of fish. And the key here is that it has to be a mutually beneficial relationship to make an alliance work. If you're willing to help other people succeed, then making strategic alliances a core part of your growth strategy, when implemented properly, will pay dividends month after month, year after year. Now, as a little side note here is that I want to quickly mention that in order to get really big returns from strategic alliances, you'll almost certainly at some point be entering into some kind of commercial arrangement. Well, that's part of the negotiation process to find a win-win agreement and a different subject to what I'm trying to illustrate here. Plus, you'll need to have a few assets in place as it makes it easy for your partners to share you with their people. Exactly what these assets are, how you create them and how you use them with your partners is a little bit beyond the scope of this book. But again, you can check out um, how to do this by grabbing, uh, by, by taking a look at my hands-free sales system PDF and walkthrough video that explains how these work. And again, that is in the written version. The link to that is in the written version of this guide at thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash free book. So the key here is that you're not always looking for partners to simply throw business your way. You're looking to add value to them and their audience and client base first using assets that you create once and can deliver over and over again at scale. And having said this, you can still build relationships and potential strategic alliance partnerships before you have all your assets in place, though you should be creating a few simple ones alongside you actually doing this as well. Okay, so that's the end of my little side note. So let me show you how you can use LinkedIn as the starting point for finding and building profitable strategic alliance partners and referral sources that will produce consistent results, leads, prospects, reach, clients, and new revenue streams. So how to build strategic alliances on LinkedIn. Finally, Adam, you might be saying, look, I know, I know, but if you're still here, I know you've bought into the power of this and you're far more likely to actually do what I'm about to tell you. So there's four steps to building strategic alliances on LinkedIn. Step one, you need to define your perfect partners. Step two, you need to find your perfect partners. Step three, you need to hook your perfect partners. And four, you need to reach out to your potential partners. Now, before we dive into the details, I just have one more thing I may need to make abundantly clear. You must put your clients at the center of your partnership strategy meaning you must approach every potential partner with a view that you are going to be recommending them to your best clients when they have a need for what your partner does. This will force you to be very selective with who you partner with. You have to trust each partner will take good care of your clients if you recommend them, endorse them or promote them as they'll remember who introduced them, especially if they're not up to scratch. Seriously, you will do more harm than good if you suggest another business that doesn't do right by your client. But if you do your due diligence and build a strong network of other quality businesses who can provide a service that's of real value to your existing clients, then you establish yourself as a trusted source of knowledge in your industry. And the next time your client is looking for advice or to do business, they'll be coming back to you. This is why it's so important that no one is in your partner crew unless you are serious about referring business to them. Okay, so on to the steps. Step one is define your perfect partners. The first step is to define the type of partners that you want to have on your crew. You're going to want to create an initial list of, say, 20 to 30 non-competing business types. These are your potential partners and referral sources. Think about the types of non-competing businesses that sell or provide services or products to your ideal clients, either before they need your service, instead of your services, or after they have used your services. What do they do? What services do they offer? Now, let me give you a few examples. Let's say you're a mortgage broker specializing in first time mortgages. It doesn't make sense to pair up with another mortgage broker, but it makes a lot of sense to look for successful estate agents who might be willing to partner with you to share clients. Any first time buyers that inquire or they help to um, have an offer accepted, they're going to need help with mortgages. But as you're a mortgage broker who specializes in first time buyers, you're not going to be a competitor to another broker who specializes in, say, mortgages for uh, self-employed contractors. So you could partner with those two, even though you might think at first glance that uh, you're in competition with each other. 
Now, another example is if you're a financial advisor, you look you could look to partner with an accountant or maybe a divorce solicitor because they're in a prime position to know when their clients need an advisor and you're in an ideal position to know when your clients may need their services. Or if you sell to small businesses, then you could develop partnerships with other businesses that work with small business owners. Think banks, accountants, insurance brokers, solicitors, printers, graphic designers, web designers, software companies, IT consultancies, uh, consultants, leadership trainers, HR trainers, sales trainers, and I could go on and on and on. But hopefully, you're starting to see the size of the opportunity with this. So step two is find your perfect partners. You'll find some of these potential partners and referral resources from your own research, but your clients and existing contacts can also be a great source of suggestions. So ask them about other businesses they like doing businesses with and approach them to and referencing your um, shared connection. So start with your existing network, then expand out and approach new people. Find out who you're already connected to on LinkedIn that you can explore a potential referral relationship with. So the way that you can do this is similar to how you would find um, clients, but you click on the search bar at the top left, click on people, click on first degree connection filter, click all filters at the top um, of the filter choices and choose things like your ideal location. Scroll down at the titles of your targeted partners. Now, if you want to add more than one title at a time, you can use a search string. So you could say CEO and CFO and director, for example. Next, you'll want to search each of their connections to see if they're connected to people that fit your ideal client profile. And uh, what you do here is you click on your potential partner's profile, click on connections, which is which usually says 500 plus connections next to their location. Now, quick note here that some people restrict the viewing of their connections, so you won't be able to see all of them. And if that's the case, just move on for now. And then in a new window, just repeat steps one to five above. But instead of adding the title of the referral partner, add titles of your prospects, i.e. business owners or CEO or CFO. And if they're connected to a lot of your ideal potential clients, just add them to your list to reach out to. So step three, hook your perfect partners. Now, most potential strategic partnerships are doomed from the start. Now, I don't mean to be negative, but it is true. Just think about how many people you've had a... uh, coffee date with after meeting them at say a networking event where you both agree it makes sense to refer business each other's way. Now think how many referrals and leads actually came from this. I'm going to guess not many. Maybe you got a few but nowhere near the level of benefit and growth potential that they could have been for both of you. Now this happens because neither side took the initiative to make partnering an attractive proposition. One that's easy to say yes to and has clear benefits and expectations for both parties. See, simply reaching out and asking if they know anyone they could refer you isn't going to work very well. You need to get a little bit more creative than this if you're going to get some engagement and buy-in from any potential partner. Especially those that are a few or many steps ahead of you and have a bigger pond, as they're almost certainly going to get a lot of people trying to get in with them, right? So armed with this knowledge and the strategic foresight to understand the huge upside to partnerships, it's really not the wisest decision to leave things up to chance. You have to be the leader here. The key to getting somebody interested in partnering with you is to present it as an opportunity that gets them excited about partnering with you by offering specific ideas for how you can support each other. Now, these individual ideas eventually combine to form your strategic alliance program. And this is how you'll stand out. Don't do what most people who try and fail to build a strategic alliance program by making the other person do all the work or try to figure things out. People are just too busy for that when they don't know you. So come up with ideas that are easy for them to say yes to. Now, here's just a few examples. Ask them what kind of clients or connections they're looking for and offer to connect them with one or two key people that you know that fits his profile. Ask them to teach you the best way to refer them to your clients. Offer to do content swaps. Offer them one of your assets that you know will be valuable to their clients and let them send it to their network. And you can go one better and stand out by offering to co-brand it with their details. Suggest you deliver a valuable presentation or talk to their audience or their network or their clients. 
Invite them onto your podcast for an interview and help them spread their message to your audience. Now you may have guessed, this is one of my favorite ways to engage new partners and exactly one of the strategies that I do and implement with the Client Catching Podcast. It is hands down being the best way I've ever used for building a network and relationships with potential partners, referral sources, clients, and co-creating valuable content. Now, I can highly advise that you go back and listen to my interview with Steve Gordon from Unstoppable CEO, CEO and also go and check out the excellent Unstoppable CEO podcast about the strategy for using a podcast to grow your business. Plus, if you go through onto the show notes page, you can get hold of, you can find a link to get hold of an excellent book that he has uh, recently written called Prospect, uh, Podcast Prospecting. And that is completely for free as well. I highly, highly recommend that you go and check that out. And if you want to see how this fits into my overall growth accelerator ecosystem, you can um, grab my free guide and bonus video, how to stand out and attract clients in a world of extroverts and selfies, or watch my on-demand masterclass. And again, the links to that are in the written version um, under golden rule number nine. And the final one is you could invite them to join a partnership mastermind group. Now, this is also incredibly powerful. There's more details in this strategy in the workbook from uh, this golden rule, which will be in the action steps. And I also highly suggest that you listen to a couple of interviews, one with Chris Ducker from upreneur.com and also um, my mastermind episode where I talk to a few people from a mastermind that I'm in involved in about the power of masterminds. Now, as I said, there's more detail and step-by-step instructions on how to do all of this in the workbook at the end of this golden rule. But I'm hoping that you can see the common thread running through most of the above. Developing partnerships is a game of giving first. And this is true in building any relationship, both with potential partners and potential clients. So if you if you approach finding partners in this way, you'll find that the doors to opportunity you never even considered naturally begin to open. Now, of course, they won't every time or with every single individual. However, if you follow this process, you'll have a much more robust and effective process for building mutually beneficial relationships in a way that will produce a consistent stream of growth opportunities for years to come. Because when these partnerships develop, inbound referrals and leads become more consistent and opportunities close faster. And when you take a well-structured and strategic approach to partnering, you go from being a nice idea to your partners might get around to helping someday to an irresistible business growth partner they cannot stop raving about. Okay, so step four, reach out to your potential partners. Once you've compiled your initial list of potential partners and you have a few specific ideas for how you are going to run your strategic alliance program, it's time to reach out, introduce yourself and your idea for partnering. Now, this is an important step and it's one that many people get wrong. It's not a case of saying, hey, can you refer business my way and I'll give you a cut? But that is the partner version of the leg pump, right? Remember, you're building a strategic alliance program. This is a long term strategic approach that will reap dividends for years to come when you do it well. It's one that will take a little bit of time to get into motion. But once it is, the momentum will be so great, it will be almost impossible to stop. So don't screw it up at the first step. So I'm going to give you some partner outreach frameworks now. And uh, again, a little bit of a side note, other than the two examples I'm going to um, go through in a moment, I'm not going to uh, fill any more airspace here by um, going through a lot of the frameworks to do the actual outreach here. And uh, you know, as you'll see uh, in, in the written version of the book, um, this has become far longer than I ever intended. Um, this entire book, funny enough, it started as me writing a bit of an article, which kind of turned into a guide, which then morphed into this book and now this audio book. So that's, I guess, the uh, ADHD uh, fo uh, hyper focus, which is uh, kicking in uh, or has kicked in. But um, I'm hoping you're finding it valuable as you're going through this. And um, yeah, also, you'll notice that I'm not a professional um, audio book uh, narrator. So, um, yeah. Yeah, forgive me for a few of the uh, the, the slip ups every now and again, but um, that's why I've included my complete framework for partner outreach and further instructions for how you do this, plus a few extra bonus strategies that can literally turbocharge the effectiveness and 
ROI of your partnership efforts. And that's all in the workbook for this golden rule in the action steps that you can find the link to um, in the written version at thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash free book if you haven't got it by now. Because if you're reaching out to potential partners that your clients or connections recommended, this is pretty simple because you can use the common connection as a starting point. So you remember of, of, of the first, it's like how you identify this. Well, go and ask your clients, other people that they use, right? And if you get a few names, this is the one that you would use. So this is assuming that you are not already connected, but it can be easily adapted if you happen to be already connected and they're in your first degree network. So if you're reaching out to a recommended potential partner, you would simply say, hey, name, our mutual client, whatever your client's name is, recommended you as someone I should connect with. As he, she has nothing but great things to say about the work you do. And as we offer complimentary services, I thought it would be good to connect here and see if there's a way that we can support each other. Check out my profile. And if it makes sense, please accept my invitation. Now, if you found your potential partner by your search of your first degree connections on LinkedIn, you can reach out with a message like the one below. And if you find people via a second or third degree search, you'll need to send a connection request message first and then adapt the following and use it in your thank you for connection message. So if you're reaching out to existing first degree potential partners, you could simply say something like, hi name, I see we've been connected here for a while, but we've not really had the chance to see if there's any way we can support each other. It would be great to learn a little bit more about you, what your focus is, and if it makes sense, help me understand the best way to recommend you and your business to my network. Are you open to this? Sign off with your name. And if you're going to second and third degree connections, you could start with something such as, hi, name, I'm reaching out because I'm building a referral network of other businesses, um, other business people, people, uh, person types, for example, in a particular industry or location. And I'd love to in include you if you're open to getting referrals. If so, hit accept and I can tell you more. Now, there aren't many people out there that are actually not happy to receive referrals. So that one can work really, really well. And you can even adapt and use that to go to um, first connections and all that kind of thing. As I say, these are frameworks. They're for you to kind of um, take a look at and adapt it and work out what, what works best for you with your market, with your partners and all that kind of thing. Because ultimately, you're looking to become more than just a provider of the thing that you do. Think of building strategic alliances like you're building an entire fleet of client catching captains of growth focused complementary businesses and finding ways to collaborate for both of you to gain access to the bountiful catches available on this ocean of opportunity. You are taking an active interest in helping your client get results at every stage of, your of their growth journey knowing that your solution will always create new, often good problems, but ones that you don't specifically solve. You'll find that when you use LinkedIn in this way, it's both one of the quickest and most reliable ways to flood your business with leads, clients, and new opportunities for growth you've yet to discover. I think I've made my point. I hope I have, and I hope you see the real power in this. And if you have, it's now time to get to work. So the action steps for this golden rule is to first grab a copy of my partnership and referral message frameworks workbook. Again, that's in the written version of the book. If you haven't got it by now, I'm almost sick hearing myself saying the URL, but I'll give it again. It's www.thinklikeafish.co.uk forward slash free book. Next, you're going to define your ideal partner business type. Then you're going to start asking your clients who they use and research your first degree connections for potential partners. You're going to come up with a list of 20 to 30 potential partners. And then you're going to start reaching out and having conversations. And then you're going to build your fleet of referral and strategic partnerships, partners and nurture the relationship. And then you're going to watch your business grow. So I hope you've got a lot out of this golden rule. For me, it really is the key golden rule. And it is, if you do nothing else, use what is in this golden rule because it literally has the power to blow up your business. So on that, let's move on to the final golden rule. Thank you ever so much for listening today. I know there's a lot of podcasts out there you could be listening to. You've chosen this one. And for that, I am truly, truly grateful. If you're a first time listener or a, or a long time listener and you haven't yet subscribed to the show, please make sure that you do because you'll get updated of the latest episodes 
every time they come out. And if again, you are enjoying it, I'd really, really appreciate a honest rating review on Apple Podcasts. I read every single one personally, and they do really mean the world to me. And yes, they help others find the show. If you're able to do that, again, I massively, massively appreciate it. But until next time, happy fishing.